for Elmer Transcona. Thank you once again, Madam Speaker. It's my pleasure to rise today and speak to Bill C-42 at uh, report stage. And I'll be talking a little bit along themes that have already been explored today. I think one of the reasons why a public beneficial ownership registry is so important is because <coughs> Canada notoriously is losing tens of billions of dollars in tax revenue every year as a result of uh, tax havens where Canadian corporations are able to declare their revenue in other jurisdictions and then either bring that money back into the country or not without paying any further tax. So what that means is that despite the fact that they're doing their business and raising their revenue here in Canada, they're finding ways out of paying their fair share, both for <clears throat> from a more general point of view and paying into general revenue that then go for paying uh, for things like the Canada Health Transfer and other important uh, sources of funding that ensure Canadians have access to health care and education and other important services that they depend upon, uh, but also because these companies are making use of a fair amount of Canadian infrastructure that Canadians pay for through the, through the public purse in order to create the profits that they're getting, and it's only right that they pay their fair share. And if you look at the share <coughs> of uh, government revenue that comes from business and corporate tax over the last number of decades, that share has been decreasing considerably against the share that working Canadians are paying. And so you do end up in a difficult situation that's not financially tenable where corporate Canada is no longer paying as much of the bill as it used to for government services. And so one of the tools to be able to do that is to be able to better define the extent to which tax revenue is being uh, avoided or escaped by corporate players in Canada and part of that puzzle is um, <clears throat> lifting the veil of secrecy that so often uh, covers over various kinds of business arrangements and makes it hard to tell who needs to be held to account for the uh, practices of their business. And that veil of secrecy is not something that even though I think it's an interesting idea to have a global minimum tax, which is not to say that that means Canada has to have a minimum corporate tax. We have a lot of other competitive advantages that I think make us an attractive place for an investment and Canada shouldn't self, sell itself short in that regard. Uh, nevertheless, even if we did have a world minimum corporate tax, it's not going to address the issues of secrecy that I think a public beneficial ownership registry uh, rightly addresses. Um, but I think it's also important to say that in the current context and over the course of the last year or so, the arguments for a beneficial public ownership registry have become even more urgent because there's another side to the story. When I talk about the veil of secrecy in respect to, uh, you know, <coughs> corporate actors and ensuring that they're paying their fair share. That's just one part of the story. We also know that there are malignant actors um, uh, that aren't just uh, getting out of paying their fair share of taxes, but who are doing far more. And I think of some of the Russian oligarchs that are known to be uh, close associates of Vladimir Putin, who's currently waging an illegal and unjust war in Ukraine. Um, and <clears throat> Canada, unfortunately, is one of the places where they've seen fit to stash some of their cash and their assets. And in order to be able to properly enforce sanctions against people like that, we have to lift the veil of secrecy around corporate ownership because those are the spaces where these kinds of folks are hiding. And so that's why we've seen so many of Canada's allies across the world just in the last 18 months or so uh, really accelerate their own programs for, for beneficial public ownership registries and it's why Canada can't be left behind. Now, my understanding is that in order to implement this registry, um, it will take some time after the legislation passes in order to be able to do that, and that's why I believe it's important this legislation pass before we break for the summer, because that gives about six months to the end of the year for officials to, with a legislative mandate from Parliament, begin to put this registry into effect. And I think that that is one thing that we can do in order to support Ukraine and to ensure that Canada isn't a haven for those that would do Ukraine harm. 
It's why I think this has to pass uh, with, with urgency. And I take some of the points that were made earlier in debate about the imperfections of process at uh, committee. What I'm hearing is that there is some goodwill around this bill and a willingness, I hope, as we move forward to look at some of uh, the weaknesses of the bill and improve upon it in the future. But I would rather see us be improving upon something that's in place than continuing to talk about what might come to be in a context where, where the buddies of Vladimir Putin are having a relatively free run here in Canada because we don't have the information we need in order to be able to adequately uh, track those sanctions. Just as an example, there's been talk about lowering the, uh, the ownership threshold under the Public Beneficial Ownership Registry. That's an idea I'm quite open to, but I'm also mindful that if this registry is going to be a success, we need to have participation from the provinces. My understanding is that where provincial registries already exist, the, the uh, threshold is around 25%. So that's a conversation where the federal government needs to work with the provinces and bring everyone along together in order to lower that threshold. If we end up with a federal registry with a lower threshold and some provinces decide not to participate or it delays their participation, I don't think we'll be doing ourselves a service. So that's why I think that <clears throat> while there is certainly room for legitimate criticism and I think an opportunity to do better as we learn more about public beneficial ownership registries and, and how to do it better, it shouldn't delay this legislation passing before summer so that this can be brought into place in a timely way and Canada can, be, can begin applying more pressure, as it rightly should, to folks that are supporting Vladimir Putin and his illegal war in Ukraine. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments? Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for uh, the Honourable Parliament Secretary to the Minister of Health. No, no questions? Okay. The Honourable Member for Mission Masquee, Fraser Canyon. Well, th thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you to the Member from Winnipeg for his speech today. Uh, I'd like to understand why the um, the, the, the rationale behind uh, lowering the significant threshold from 25 to 10 percent. Indeed, the New Democratic Party uh, supported this amendment after hearing testimony um, uh, during, during, the de uh, during the debate at committee about why Canada should be a leader in money laundering by adopting a more progressive threshold, which was outlined by the RCMP. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Member for Elmwood Transcona. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, as, as the member likely knows, I mean, when we talk about problems in, uh, in the tax regime and, and folks that would like to evade paying their taxes, they can often structure their business in a way to come just right up to the threshold but not exceed it. And so with a 25% threshold, I think the concern is that it leaves a lot of latitude for corporate organization uh, to be able to go right up to a relatively higher, higher threshold. However... As I say, I think if Canada is going to have a lower threshold, which I'm quite open to as an idea, that's not a decision that can be just taken here in Ottawa alone. It's a decision that the provinces have to go along with. It sounds like we're not there yet, unfortunately. I don't think we should delay setting up the registry while that conversation happens. And I certainly encourage the federal government to have a strong dialogue with provinces about how to get that threshold lower. But we should enable the government to set up that infrastructure now while those conversations are having instead of insisting on the conversation before the infrastructure. The Honourable Member for Joliet. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I'd like to thank uh, our colleague for that very interesting speech. Uh, I'd like to piggyback on the last question and the idea that Canada could become a leader in the fight against tax evasion. Uh, and. Uh, we need a revolution here. Recently, there was a leak of documents, and Radio Canada revealed that Canada was getting 20 or 30 percent less tax revenues than some European countries, and that's a huge loss for Quebec, too. Isn't this a scandal? Shouldn't a message be sent that the government needs to do more? The Honourable Member for Elmwood Transcona. Thank you very much for that question. There's a Canadian author, I think, his name is Deneau, who wrote a book that describes the role of Canadian banks in creating the whole international infrastructure of tax havens. 
So, yes, it's going to take a very major change in culture, not just in Canada, for the government of Canada, but also for the banking sector, which is a full participant in this international scheming. So we have a lot of work to do to change our thinking on this and to see to it that Canada is no longer playing this role and that Canada is no longer a place where you can't get justice and so that accountants make sure so that companies pay their fair share, not just Canadian workers who pay their fair share of taxes. No comments. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Government has to yes, sir, Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. And I just want to emphasize that when we talk about corporations and laundering and so forth, that it is important that we recognize that for many of these uh, companies that we're re referencing are actually uh, through provincial responsibilities. And I think by the federal government bringing forward legislation of this uh, nature, I think it demonstrates leadership and hopes that other provinces uh, and territories will in fact uh, do likewise because both uh, complementing each other will give strength to what it is that uh, is actually being proposed. And I'm wondering if the member from Elmwood Transcona can expand on that particular point. The Honourable Member for Elmwood Transcona. This is certainly an area for federal and provincial uh, cooperation. And as I said before, I think what's important is that we create the legislative mandate for the federal government to move forward as expeditiously as possible and that the government take into very serious consideration. I think a lot of the, the constructive feedback that have been offered uh, already in the, in, in the course of this debate. And they take that into their conversations with the provinces so that we can build the best possible uh, public beneficial ownership registry. I think what we have in the legislation now is good. It can be better, uh, but we don't need it to be better in order to get started on all the work that needs to happen uh, in order to start applying pressure to folks like Putin's buddies who are stashing cash here in Canada.